What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, this is Overlanding Now and today we're gonna be diving into this little guy I got sitting beside me. It's the Blue Eddy EB3A Mini Power Station. Um, what I wanna talk about today is what this thing is actually good for. And is this enough power for you or is it not gonna work for you? Also, we've been on a trip, we were on a trip for over a month and we use this almost every single day so I could come up with a real opinion of what this thing is capable of. Um, I take it every single time I get into the Subaru and go on a storm chase because I like to have extra backup battery power just in case I need to charge some devices. So we're gonna go through all of that and more and then we'll talk about if this power station is right for you. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started on the Blue Eddy EB3A, what I want to say is if you hear a god-awful hissing noise, it's this microphone, and I've been battling it for like the past three videos. I think I finally have it figured out, but I didn't figure it out. I'm just letting you know that if you hear a hiss, I'm working on it. Audio is not my strong suit. Um, so the Blue Eddy EB3A, what I want to do is read you some of the specs off their website so you have exactly the information that you may be looking for in case you have not already done your research on this specific unit. Now, it comes with a 600 watt AC pure sine wave inverter, 268 watt hour capacity, uh, 430, 430 watt max fast dual charging, solar and AC, um, LifePo 4 batteries with 2,500 plus cycles, six ways to recharge, nine outputs for charging multiple devices at once, and a smart controller and monitor in the Blue Eddy app, as well as a 200 watt max solar input. So that is from Blue Eddy's mouth what they have on here. And I'm gonna give you my experience with this unit, um, and I'm gonna try to keep it as short-winded as possible. So what do I use this for? So in the power wagon, we have a complete backup battery, dual battery system in the bed of the truck that I custom built myself. So this doesn't get used for any of our large appliances. What I can tell you is this little guy will run um, an ARB 47 quart refrigerator for around six hours in the blazing Arizona desert. So um, that's not a lot of time, but it is a good backup in the emergency that your primary battery dies. And that is what I use this for in that specific instance. Um, I wanted to see how much this could get me in the event that my batteries die, were stationary for a while, and the solar is not charging up my big, my big battery bank fast enough. Now, you have two USB ports on the front, two 110 outlets over here. You do have your charging spot right there. Um, you have a flashlight and you also have wireless charging for your cell phone, cell phones up on top. Now, this unit is great for small devices. What you see right here, and I have a mosquito on my foot, what you see right here is how I use it. I use it for my 16 inch MacBook Pro. I use it for my iPad. Um, I'll charge my phone on top. And this is kind of my workflow. When I'm out on uh, do, shooting landscape photography or if I'm doing storm photography, whatever it is, a lot of times I will try to process some of my images right after I get them if I'm not in the middle of a terrible storm or I have the time to go back and take the shot again in the event that I didn't get exactly what I wanted. Because it's really hard to see on the small um, LED screen on my Sony a7R4 or the Sony a7R3. So I'll bring it back to my computer, I'll hop on real quick, I'll take a look at my images, maybe make a couple quick edits to make sure I got what I like, and then I will load everything up and put it back in the car. This little unit goes with me everywhere. Um, I have charged my cell phone, my iPad, my drone batteries, my camera batteries, as well as my MacBook Pro and my wife's phone all off this unit several times before needing to recharge it. All of those components charging at once draws a lot of power, but I was able to get two cycles, two charging cycles out of this one unit for all of those devices. Now, this is something for the weekend warrior type person or somebody who just wants something in their vehicle at all times like we have this is always in the car especially when we go out on a storm chase in the event i need auxiliary power quick because the usb outlets in the subaru outback wilderness are trash they don't charge 
anything quick enough. And if I need my iPad to watch radar, or I need to be able to edit a photo, or I need to charge a camera battery because my batteries are low, this is my go-to. Um, and this is something that I think everyone should consider having, even if it's not the one from Blue Eddy, the EB3A, that's fine, but something of this size. If you're interested in this specific unit, I will put the link in the description so you can go check that out for yourself. Now, this unit for the weekend warrior type or just somebody who wants to have some type of backup battery available to them, it is the perfect solution. It is about 15 pounds, roughly, and it's extremely small profile. It fits anywhere and you can use it whenever you need it. Um, you can also charge it off your vehicle as you're driving. That's something that we've done as well on our trip. We were charging this as we were driving so I could reuse it and just kind of keep cycling it through. I put this through about a month long torture test before I did this video. Blue Eddy wanted me to make this video and was kind of upset that I didn't get it out when I was supposed to, but I wanted to make sure this thing was as rock solid as they said it was. And I can honestly say for the price, a $200 auxiliary battery unit and what you can power with it, it is a fantastic bargain, especially against the other competitors out there. I'm not going to name them. I'm sure you probably know who they are. This thing has done everything it was advertised to do and it charges in about an hour and a half off of a traditional 110 outlet in a house. So an hour and a half and you're back to 100% and you can hit the road again. And for me and the way we travel and the activities that we get into, that is extremely important. Okay. I think that's all I have for the Blue Eddy EB3A. If you guys liked the video or it was helpful, I would love for you to hit that like button, subscribe so you could come along for more adventures. I will put both of our Instagrams right here. One is like the overlanding vehicle thing and then the other one is for um, our photography, our landscape photography, storm photography, that whole deal. So I appreciate you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments. I will get to them as soon as I can. I'm sorry about the hissing noise coming from this trash microphone. I'm going to fix that. Um, I was just watching YouTube videos while, before I started filming this on how to fix it. Thank you to Wilder Ways for sending me those videos at, in, a pin, in a pinch and helping me get my audio dialed in. So um, all that being said, thank you guys, and I will see you on the next one.